The risks are real for essential workers who just can't stay isolated in their own homes right now. People like the medical pros, the police officers, grocery store workers, and some federal employees say they can easily do their jobs from home, but they say their bosses won't let them. Adam Longo talked with a pregnant woman who just quit her job because she says it wasn't worth the risk. Now I'm finally, sorry, I'm finally six months pregnant and we've gone to this point where I can't risk her. I can't jeopardize my child. Air Force veteran Carly Wade says she and her husband struggled through miscarriages before finally getting to celebrate this pregnancy. I spoke to her last Thursday. Yesterday was my last day. Um, so I've worked for the VA for three years. Carly worked a non-medical desk job at the Veterans Affairs Medical Center in Martinsburg, West Virginia. As coronavirus cases increased, she got increasingly worried. Um, my department specifically has changed nothing, even to yesterday. Nothing's changed. It's business as usual. Carly was among 2,200 employees of the Martinsburg VA. The interim director told me in an interview April 1st that 3.6% of his staff was teleworking. A spokesperson confirmed last week that number hadn't changed. That's only 79 people out of 2,200. A number of employees reached out to me questioning VA management decisions. In that April 1st interview, I also spoke to the VA Medical Center's Chief of Medical Services. I want them to know that the hospital's approach was not haphazard, that it was very thoughtful and deliberate. Carly worked for a unit within the Martinsburg VA called Care in the Community. It's an outreach program that plugs veterans in with community doctors if the VA can't help with their specific need. So it's just paperwork. It's just, it's all online mostly. There's nothing about our job that we can't do from home. But Carly says her requests to go remote were vehemently denied by her supervisor. There's been several occasions where all of us, she is shouting at us, stop asking me about telework. You're not going to be teleworking. Your numbers aren't good enough. Stop asking me. Carly's co-workers backed up her account, so we wanted to know, is the VA putting employees' health at risk over fears productivity might suffer if they work remotely? And why wouldn't the bosses here make an exception for someone coming to work who was six months pregnant? I repeatedly reached out and connected with officials at the Martinsburg VA. I spoke with the interim director and the chief medical officer April 1st for a broader story about why VA employees weren't being allowed to telework. But since that time, when my questions turned to Carly's specific case, and I asked why telework was being denied to a pregnant woman, and I asked what preventative measures were being taken to protect employees, well, the Martinsburg VA did not respond to my multiple requests for comment. You're going to see more and more employees affected. The American Federation of Government Employees Union President, Dr. Everett Kelly, talked to WUSA 9 last week after his union filed a suit on behalf of 260,000 VA employees about current working conditions at VA medical centers. They're, they're putting employees through a lot of red tape and bureaucracy uh, just to ensure that they beat them down so that they are probably go away and not say nothing. Here's an example. When I spoke to Martinsburg VA Interim Director Kenneth Allensworth April 1st, I asked about this document given to employees, indicating that they needed five different levels of approval in order to telework. I also asked if telework options would be broadened. Yeah, we're looking at numerous work, workplace uh, authorities to include staggering of shifts, uh, relocation of activities or offices to minimize exposure, and then certainly telework. And each of those are case-by-case case as operationally appropriate. Since she's a veteran herself, Carly's primary care doctor is with the Martinsburg VA. She got a letter from the VA, a fact sheet about pregnancy and COVID-19, saying it's too soon to know the effects of COVID-19 on a fetus. But had she not quit, she'd have been expected to be right there at her desk with dozens of others in a confined workspace. They just, they don't care about the people below them. We're just numbers, I'm replaceable. The VA press secretary at headquarters in DC did confirm to me that staffing decisions are being made by each director of the individual VA facilities across the country. Those orders aren't coming down from the VA secretary or by anyone else in Washington. So despite the fact that Carly's former colleagues are still having to go into work at the office in Martinsburg, people who do that exact same job at VA medical centers in DC and Baltimore, many of them are in fact working remotely right now. I also asked VA headquarters if they could tell me what percentage of employees were teleworking at other VA medical centers, like the ones in D.C. and Baltimore. I was told I'd have to file a Freedom of Information Act request to get that information. 
So it could be some time before we have answers for you on that. Adam Longo, WUSA 9. Six weeks. Six weeks ago, governors across the country started shutting things down. Since then, stories about coronavirus have consumed every aspect of our lives. Federal employees have been struggling, and some say they're still not getting what they need to keep them safe. Now, I've talked a lot about postal workers over the past six weeks, and here's a major reason to be concerned. This virus more severely affects African Americans and people of color. 25% of Maryland's coronavirus cases are in Prince George's County. Much of the Postal Service workforce there in Prince George's County, African American employees. And one woman who works at the Hyattsville Post Office, she's had enough. Why should I have to beg somebody to give me gloves and give me face masks? Why do I have to beg for it? Why? Why is that right? Miss Zebulon Clayton, you'll find her most days here inside the main post office off Route 1 in Hyattsville. She spent the better part of three decades with the U.S. Postal Service. I went through anthrax. I know how they treated us with anthrax. It's even worse this time. How would you characterize the help that you're getting, if any, from your employer during this time? Um, none to nothing. I mean, it should not be where you have to beg or be denied. Are you saying that you're being denied gloves and masks and things to protect yourself? Exactly, yes. And, and what's the explanation? The explanation is saying that they, they, they have to um, give it to everybody so they don't have but a certain amount. But that's not true. A few weeks back, a mail carrier in southeast D.C. blew the whistle, telling me he had to provide his own mask, his own disinfecting wipes. He felt he was in danger every day. Do you feel like you're at risk every time you go to work? Oh, it's no question. I broke down crying this morning because of the stress. One of my employees caught the coronavirus. A USPS spokesman confirms two Hyattsville employees are positive for COVID-19, including one here at the Langley Park Post Office off New Hampshire and University. He says those locations have gone through multiple sanitation processes and inspections. Miss Clayton says at her post office, not so much. Or even just, you know, just, even just having the unit clean properly. They said they're supposed to come in every day and disinfect our area once the customer before the customer get here. We don't have that. They had to clean the person come in in the afternoon, sometimes randomly. Sometimes he doesn't even show up. Maryland Governor Larry Hogan has ordered residents to wear masks inside public areas. Businesses are turning away people without them. Another postal employee told me management told them they can't deny service. I addressed that with the USPS spokesman who responded, quote, the safety and well-being of our employees remains our highest priority as we continue normal operations during this unprecedented time. You're not protecting us. We're not. We're afraid every day I come in this parking lot, I'm afraid to go in that building. And we'll, of course, keep bringing you those stories, and I'll keep holding the people in charge accountable. Hundreds of messages like this are coming into my inbox through email, Facebook, Twitter, Signal, and Instagram. Keep them coming. These are from federal workers in our area and across the country who continue to be put at risk of catching this virus because their bosses, the federal government, is still forcing them to come into offices nationwide despite having non-essential jobs. Now, I've been on this story since last week, and our reporting now has three United States senators taking action. First, let me share some of these messages with you. Here's somebody at Fort Meade. Considered high risk, age and health issues. We've been told it's business as usual. Here's someone at Fort Belvoir. No mask, no gloves, no social distancing, enclosed work environment. Atlanta, IRS office, still required to come into work. Management saying it is still business as usual. And then someone else, cubicle setting, the person on the other side, not six feet away from me. Management is giving us no guidance. Now, workers in IRS offices across the country have been sending me pictures and video of the conditions inside their offices, like this one near Atlanta, Chambly, Georgia. No social distancing, some people sharing desks, people in close proximity without any basic sanitizing materials, and plenty of rumors about cases of coronavirus in their buildings. Today, emergency bipartisan legislation proposed by Democratic Maryland Senator Chris Van Hollen, Democrat Kirsten Sinema of Arizona, and Republican James Lankford of Oklahoma to get these workers out of the office and home where it's safe. The federal agencies are now operating under a patchwork of different rules, different understandings of what they should or should not do. And that's why 
it's important that the Congress pass the bipartisan bill. Our legislation also requires that the administration take action to move employees to teleworking if it's not currently available to them. All right, so this that they're talking about is a single issue bill. It's not connected to this relief package that they're trying to get through the Senate. So these three senators have proposed it. Now, I also spoke with Northern Virginia Congressman Jerry Connolly late last week. He's taking the lead on similar legislation in the House. You know, though, who hasn't said a word about this whole thing? The White House. No answers so far in those daily briefings about government workers or contractors. In fact, I've got two sources at the White House who say their jobs are non-essential, non-mission critical, right? Yet they're right there at work because the mandate from above is business as usual. Bruce? I've been sounding the alarm for the past 10 days about federal workers and contractors who, despite CDC guidance and the president's social distancing guidelines that they stay at home, those employees have been ordered by their bosses to continue to come to work through this crisis. Many in crowded offices, many of those offices, for the lack of sanitizing materials. Now, last night I spoke with Texas Senator Ted Cruz and I brought it to his attention. One hour and 44 minutes later, the IRS Service Center in Austin, Texas was closed, locked up until at least mid-April. Senator Cruz talked about the resiliency of the people of Texas comparing the crisis to the aftermath that they saw after Hurricane Harvey. We're seeing this right now with coronavirus. We're seeing healthcare workers, doctors and nurses that are treating people at risk to their own health. My inbox has lit up like a Christmas tree through Facebook, Twitter, Signal, Instagram and email. Hundreds of federal workers telling me how they're still required to be in the office despite the coronavirus crisis. Supervisors and agency heads ignoring CDC guidance and the president's directive that people socially distance themselves and limit gatherings to groups of 10 or less. The IRS office in Brookhaven, New York, shut down Sunday, a week after Governor Cuomo told New Yorkers to stay home. And now three people who worked in that office tested positive, potentially exposing hundreds of others. IRS officials on all this, radio silent. I have emailed them every day since last Wednesday. Talked to them on the phone several times as well. No comment, no interview with the IRS commissioner as I have repeatedly requested. And what's even more shocking to me, no comment from the White House or even the press pool about any of this. I have been asking the White House for comment for days now. I've asked my contacts at CBS News to ask a question on my behalf during one of these briefings. This is not a story we'll be letting go of because people are still literally right now being put at risk, even though their jobs are non-essential. In Clarksburg, Adam Longo, WUSA 9. So we talked a lot on this show about the safety of federal workers still going into the office and in the morning some of them will protest on the streets in Baltimore. They want better access to protective gear. Adam Longo has led the way on this part of our coverage. He's found this latest cry for help caught the attention of some senators. Do you feel you're at risk every time you walk through the front door? Oh, of course you're at risk because you don't know who you're coming in contact with. I talked with Jerry Bryant tonight from Baltimore. He works with patients in the emergency room at the VA Medical Center. They give us one surgical mask for a whole week. You sign for it, they give you a paper bag. I asked the Baltimore VA Medical Center about the allegations PPE is being rationed and reused, contrary to FDA guidelines. A spokesman telling me, quote, that's not true. Baltimore VAMC is equipped with essential items and supplies to handle an influx of coronavirus cases. She added that the Baltimore VA Medical Center has adequate PPE for the employees who are treating our COVID-19 positive patient population. That's not giving the VA workforce the mental comfort they need to perform their duties. Virginia Senator Mark Warner and four of his Senate colleagues are hearing concerns similar to Jerry's, and they've written a letter to Veterans Affairs Secretary Robert Wilkie. Secretary Wilkie, you need to be more transparent about you know, how much PPE you've got. If you say you've got enough, why aren't you willing to uh, be a more, little more liberal in terms of sharing that with the workforce. I don't want to be the one to get sick and pass it on to everyone else. Jerry says he and many of his colleagues will be protesting at 7 o'clock in the morning in front of the Baltimore VA Medical Center. That's shift change. They'll be protesting several things, including access to PPE, telework, and the possibility of hazard pay. And yes, they say they will be doing a socially distant form of protesting. Adam Wongo, WUSA 9.